Hello and welcome to Seuss, somewhere that is classically a popular tourist destination here in Tunisia. I'm right here in the middle of the Medina. This is the hotel I'm staying at. It's called the Hotel Paris. And for one night, just 27 Tunisian dinars, which is less than 10 pounds. Incredible location and some lovely, cozy budget rooms here. It's the late afternoon and I just arrived here from Tunis by Louage, which is a type of uh, cheap public transportation. 11 dinars for the two and a half hour journey. Really not bad at all, a few pounds. And I'm gonna hop out of my hotel now and explore the Medina and the interesting city center, which is so old, you probably wouldn't believe it. So let's head out now and explore the central part of the city. I'm making my way through the quiet back streets to the center of the Medina or Old Town now. Many of the stone blocks that you'll see around here have been taken from Roman sites like Carthage to build this, what is one of the finest examples of Arab architecture in the whole of Tunisia. This is the outside of the Grand Mosque of Sousse. Here we have another fine building, which I will show you momentarily. But let's go on a little bit further first. The colors of many of the buildings remind me of Sidi Bou Said, blue and white. Some nuts here. Lots of things on sale for tourists like t-shirts, also traditional clothes, food, cafes. You can see the hustle and bustle of the market already. Salam alaikum. Hello. <laughs> You're welcome in Tunisia. Ah. Uh, Aishek. Aishek. Where you come from? England. England. Brittany. Brittany. Mm. You're welcome in Tunisia. Going down one of the random narrow lanes, you can see there's another one in this direction. The Great Mosque, just on the outside here. Walking just beside the Grand Mosque here, which dates back to around 800 or so AD, as well as the Medina itself. It's all in the same style. The buildings are quite nice. Abundance of shops absolutely everywhere, tourist things, a lot of people uh, pestering you, but not as aggressive as I've experienced perhaps in other countries. Traditional clothes. I really like the look of some of these, especially for during the upcoming winter or if you travel further into the desert with one of these trademark hoods some more traditional clothes inside one of the best souvenirs you can pick up in my opinion in the Maghreb these sorts of clothes male or female All over Tunisia you will find elaborate doorways such as this. Narrow cobbled streets, exactly what you would 
expect to find. A good decision to walk this way, I think. Super interesting. Just chilling here beside the Medina wall. The Ribat is just behind me there. That's the city's most iconic landmark, built as one of 800 fortifications along the Tunisian coast by the Aglabid dynasty. The Ribat was actually occupied by religious warriors who in times of peace were peaceful and religious, but in times of war, they were the first line of attack. And it was built as half a mosque and half a fortress of sorts and that's why it has its kind of unique design there and looks a little bit intimidating but also slightly classic date trees dotted around the yellow color springing on the top of some of the branches there I'm hoping to enter into the Rabat now to get some views out over the city. Wow, look at the entrance. Just entered into the Rabat for eight dinars as the sun disappears. And you can see at the very top, the light is still shining. So I should get a view in time, really decent value and I'm so happy that they didn't take my camera off me I was kind of worried that they wouldn't let me film in here but luckily enough no one took notice One set of stairs done, the final ones to go. What of you did not expect it to be? This incredible. This might be the number one place to check out in Sousse. Like I said, this place is the most iconic tourist attraction and coming up to the tower, definitely for sunset, listening to the call to prayer, watching all the markets and people below, the buzz of the evening. Wow. You can see everything up here from the port of Sousse to the Grand Mosque and all the similar style buildings of the Medina. Having just come down from the tower behind me, an incredible view on this side of the rest of the Ribat and also of the surrounding Medina. My hotel, Hotel Paris, literally just a couple buildings over there <laughs> where I started this video.
فيهم رأي العين Hello and welcome back to Susa. I realized that yesterday I was saying the name of the city wrong. You're supposed to have an accent on the end. So Susa, today is another day and I'm here by one of the most important parts of the city, which is its beach. I wanted to quickly show you just how empty and vast it is. Yeah, it's November, but look at the sky. The weather's 22 at the moment. It stretches all the way up to Port El Kantawi, right at the end there. The beach here is just 10 minutes walk away from the Medina Hotel Paris where I'm staying. So everything's within a short distance of each other. But today, I'm not staying here in Susa. I'm actually visiting a site on a day trip, which I'm gonna include as part of this video. El Gem, one of the best preserved Roman ruins in North Africa. So I'm gonna to head to the Luage station now, which is the type of public transportation here, these minivans. Um, and make my way to El Gem. So I've now arrived here in El Gem after my Luage journey and I'm just having some lunch here in a restaurant which is in a perfect location directly opposite to the Colosseum as you can see behind me. Pretty good views, some harissa to start and olives with some fresh orange juice and he's frying my fish just there. Uh, so I'm gonna enjoy this and then I'll step into the Colosseum. Having finished my lunch, I've now entered into El Gem. 12 dinars, just 12 dinars for this UNESCO World Heritage Site. The second largest Colosseum after Rome in the Roman Empire. Let's do a grand unveiling. I've just walked up the stairs to the second level. You can see the views of it behind me. The south side where I'm standing is better preserved than the rest. Stunning views, hope I'm not making you dizzy. It was built between AD 230 and 238. It's supposed to have held 35,000 people. That's more than the entire population of the town itself in El Gem. If some of you have seen the film Gladiator, then you may recognize parts of this Colosseum. Several of the scenes were actually filmed here. It's also possible to explore the long underground passageways where many would 
spend their last moments. Animals, gladiators, prisoners, all for the entertainment of the masses. The basement beneath the center of the Colosseum, you can see the pits. Can you imagine what it would have been like to wait, to march out, to fight in front of 35,000 people baying for blood? Pretty intense stuff. You can see how dark the tunnel is. Once I enter, it's gonna go pitch black. It is quite amazing just how well preserved El Gem is, not just this entire south side behind me, also, all those underground tunnels and pits, it's all still there. So from the top of El Gem, I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it gave you a good taste of this incredible Roman Colosseum. You can do this as a day trip from Susa, and you can also spend a day exploring the Medina, relax on the beaches. There's a lot to be seen around here. And in the next video, I'm going on a day trip to Kairan, the fourth holiest city in Islam, after Mecca, Medina and Jerusalem. That's a day trip as well, just an hour Luaj journey from Susa. So El Gem, Kairan, two day trips and Susa, all just a couple hours drive from Tunis, the capital city. Much more coming from Tunisia. See you on the next one. Peace.